Hello, all my beautiful peeps. Thank you for tuning in again. And again, today we are going to do Eric Hogan. And um, at any rate, we're still doing the uh, Why is Evolution Junk Science, which it's not junk science. Sorry, you know, try again. I know you want to put it on the same vein as creationism, but it's not. I know you guys don't know what science is, but that's not my fault. Science is what the facts are, and the facts say that evolution happens, and has happened in the past, and will happen in the future. Oh, and by the way, will you people please stop conflating everything science with evolution, because it's not. I have to thank you, Eric, you and the other Young Earth apologists for keeping me in business doing these videos, but if you want a word of advice, you might want to quit with the Young Earth apologetics, because let me tell you a little secret. Um, this is why people are leaving Christianity, because you lie. And while you're thinking about it, if you're new, why don't you go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you've already subscribed to me, make sure you're still subscribed. Because for some reason, YouTube loves to unsubscribe people. Also, if you're new here, I'd like to thank you very much uh, for giving me a chance and for my fans and subscribers thank you so much for coming back you are the lifeblood of this channel and now with that let's get on with the video that original single sound had all that knowledge to perform all these amazingly complex biochemical processes wow this is so fucking dumb i don't even know where to start well I guess I'll start by saying I'm not even going to get into all of this fucking nonsense because most of my audience is going to know what the fuck is wrong with that statement. But I will explain a little bit for the others. Okay, let me think about how to go about this. You are anthropomorphizing a biochemical process a biochemical process does not know anything you fucking idiot it just does that's what biochemicals do they do what they do there is no thought to their quote-unquote action if you really want to call it an action there's no forethought. By their very nature, they do things. And they just do what they have to do by nature. Like, dude, Princeton called and they want their diploma back. Or did you really even go to Princeton? I don't even know what to think about this. I mean, that's chemistry 101. I mean, I, I took chemistry 101 a long time after you did, but come on, basic chemistry. And the only way that cell could know, as I shared earlier, that in a future point in time, certain unknown substances, the nutrients from the mother, were coming into its sphere of influence if it had foreknowledge. And the only way it could have foreknowledge is if there's a God. Wow. Why do you insist on anthropomorphizing chemical entities? A chemical entity does not have foreknowledge. What about this can't you understand? It doesn't even have knowledge. It doesn't talk. 
It doesn't do anything but be a fucking chemical. Jesus. Oh, yeah. I know why you have to anthropomorphize shit. It's because it's the only way your view of the world makes any sense. And even in your worldview, it makes no goddamn sense to anthropomorphize chemicals. You're the people that say that shit all the time. And you just give credit to hey, evolution ends up being your god. Evolution ends up being the supreme creator idea. Or I guess, to put it negatively, the only way evolution can occur is if it happens in your imagination. Is that, is that what you're telling That's me? true. You need a villain imagination to come up with evolution. Bullshit. Fucking bullshit. Fucking bullshit. Holy shit. Oh, fucking. Yowzer. You like my Inspector Gadget impression? Well, if you don't, oh well. <laughs> It's the best I've got. Give me a break, people. So, anyway, um, evolution is the product of imagination, is it? Hate to break it to you, but no. Evolution happens. Evolution is a fact. And even you morons admit it. Because if you didn't, even your fucking audience would think you're fucking morons which you are at any rate you're not even talking about what the scientific world calls evolution well let's be honest here what everybody else calls evolution you're talking about everything from the big bang to evolution and even if you say, God done did it, that doesn't solve the problem like you think it does. Because it doesn't answer the question, where did that God come from? You say the universe is too complicated to have been poofed into existence, which nobody but you people say. But anyway, I digress. So do you really think we're going to let you get away with saying God done did it and not ask, the very obvious question of where that God came from because you people say the universe is so complex it had to have a creator without saying that God is so complex he had to have a creator not to mention that it is a scientific law that energy cannot be created or destroyed do you think we just came up with that on a whim? And as far as I know, all Christians accept that. If evolution is not science, if it's a bankrupt worldview, if it if it believes that it would take random chance and creativity, you said, by the way, you mentioned this is interesting to me, that even with four and a half billion years since Earthworm, there's still not enough time for evolution to happen. Why, why do you say that? What's the, what's the thought process on that? Now, wait just a goddamn minute. This whole half hour facade is called why is evolution junk science and your reasoning for why evolution is junk science is evolution is junk science and a bankrupt world view um that isn't a reason eric i know this is hard for you to understand so i'm going to explain it to you A claim is not a reason. The claim is just that. The claim. Then you have to have reasons to back up your claim. Is that clear enough? Well, the idea that you start with nothing and then something comes into existence is impossible to believe. But if we give that somehow something did come into existence, as I shared, the amino acids and the protein molecules are so complex that the idea that blind random chance could create this magnificently functioning protein molecule. Again, nobody but you people believes in everything from nothing. How many times do we have to say that? We don't know what came before the Big Bang. It doesn't even make sense to talk about before the Big Bang. I know 
Science is really hard for you people. So let me take your little hand and walk you through it as best I can. Time did not exist before the Big Bang. It came into existence at the Big Bang. And by the way, this is not evolution. Evolution. I know all you have is the Gish Gallop, but can we please stick to evolution? Thank you. Even though I know you're not going to honor my wishes. People go to school for four to six years and then go to residency just to learn a tiny bit about the human body, say the human eye. But yet, that original single cell, not too bright, or maybe it is bright, knew all about the eye because it created the eye. Created it out of nothing, basically. There was nothing in the cell that said eye. But it made that eye, which is so complex. Man has never been able to duplicate the amazing ability that a human eye had. Oh, for fuck's sake. Can't you go at least a minute before tearing your own argument apart? I mean, come on. All right. So, not even one minute ago, you said that something cannot come from nothing. But you just said the eye came from nothing. Now, obviously, that's not even correct, but you're the one that said it, not me. So, um, yeah, there you go, tearing your own argument apart. Um, the eye came from an undifferentiated cell, and I've already talked about differentiation. Have you ever heard of the young? I believe it's called the Heidelberg or Heidelman's Dilemma. This is too easy. It's like shooting fish in a barrel. Eric, why don't you look shit up? Especially if you plan to use it. Um, it doesn't bode well for you to bring up something and you can't even get the name of the fucking thing right. First of all, it is Haldane's dilemma, so you're wrong on both counts. And second, it was refuted by Leonard Nunney's 2003 paper, The Cost of Natural Selection Revisited. You really must check your sources. But I'm not really surprised that you don't do your research. Haldane wrote his paper in 1957 and flat out stated that his numbers would need revising. Now, when Nunny ran his simulation, he found that beneficial mutations were one in every four generations. Excuse me generations while the cost of natural selection is every 70 generations but there is a cost but as stated it is not what Haldane thought and the creationists are just flat out wrong I know what a surprise not only are the creationists using outdated science, but they are just plain wrong. So, when have they ever been right about anything? And since when have they ever used up-to-date science and been truthful about anything? So, anyway... That is the real story of the Haldane Dilemma. However, let's see how accurate Eric gets to talking about this Haldane Dilemma. It ought to be really, really juicy, huh? Especially since we now know that it is not the problem that creationists make it out to be, and also that um, they really, really want to point out something that isn't even a problem anymore.
And it was an interesting thought process. It's been, apparently people have known about it for a long time. Scientists say, and they just said, what, what if you did have positive mutations? And now we don't see that. What we see is lots and lots of negative mutations. What if you had positive ones and you've got a positive mutation every single generation and you, let's just start with ape-like creatures and get to human beings. How many genetic mutational changes in a positive direction do we need to make in order to go from an ape-like creature to a human being? Eric, I have no fucking clue where you got the idea that there are no positive mutations. Oh, wait, I do. Your dad. You know, Eric, you might want to do your own fucking homework because borrowing from your dad makes you look like a dumbass. Because even when he was presenting, we knew there were positive mutations. So don't borrow from your dad. And quite honestly, I don't even know what you mean by positive and negative mutations. Um, most of the time, not always, but most of the time, positive and negative mutations are constructed by the environment. What's positive in one environment is negative in another. So you're going to have to explain what you mean by that. As for ape-like creatures to humans, yeah, do you really think I could have let this go, people? Eric, we are still apes. Get the fuck over it and learn to face reality on reality's terms and stop living in this little boy's fantasy. As you can probably tell, these people have no clue what the fuck they're talking about. They do the creationist gish gallop. The Big Bang is not evolution. Abiogenesis is not evolution. Can we please stick to evolution? But the only thing they have in their corner is the great creationist gish gallop and this is one reason why i do not debate period it's because they like to gish gallop another reason i'm just not good at it maybe next time we can actually stick to the topic of the theory of evolution i highly doubt it because sticking to one subject isn't a creationist strong point but at any rate, we shall see. But yeah, I did predict they would gish gallop. Also, my prediction that they would bring up things that have already been explained or are in the process of being explained did come true because they brought up the nothing comes from nothing, which is absolutely false. Don't forget to subscribe, like this video, and also please comment down below. It does help the algorithm, and I love all of your comments, and I read all of your comments. Um, also, um, I have a channel on Odyssey now, link in the description, so if YouTube ever gets a bee in its ass about something and they cancel me then you can find me over on odyssey and thank you very much for coming have a nice day and goodbye